This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is about using recursion to find the factorial of a number. The factorial of a number, here we have its mathematical notation, the exclamation point is used, n being our number, where n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, so it's all the positive integers including 0, but n factorial is the product of the number n times the number 1 less than it, times the number 1 less than that, all the way down to 1. So for example, 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. To use recursion to find a factorial, you have to identify the base case or cases and the general case. The general case is the fact that n factorial is the same as n times n minus 1 factorial, where the factorial here is on the n minus 1. Looking at our example with 5 again, 5 was equal, 5 factorial was 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, that's the same as 5 times 4 factorial, because 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this general case allows us to express the factorial of n in a slightly simpler form, a simpler problem where we've reduced the size of the number we're trying to find the factorial for. Instead of it being n, it's now n minus 1 is the only term in here that involves the factorial. There are two base cases, and base cases, there could be some stylistic differences in programming a solution like this as to what is or is not a base case. I'm taking the point of view here that a base case is a very obvious case that is so obvious that you want to include it in returning an answer. And I have two base cases here. Zero factorial is defined to be one in order for certain properties of factorials to all work as they should. And one factorial is obviously one, one times itself. So these are the two base cases we will use. And the general case is right here. There's a note here that this tutorial, this program, will also demonstrate numeric overflow and the use of big integer and an iterative alternate solution to the factorial problem. We have a class called factorial, a main method. It instantiates the class here and calls several functions in the class to illustrate the various things coded in here. They come in pairs. Each pair has an annotated version of a function with an A at the end of it for annotation and a regular non-annotated version of the function. The annotated versions annotate what's going on and, and produce some output to the system console so we can sort of have a, a view into what really happened when the program was running to understand the logic of the algorithms. So first we have recursive factorial here and then we'll have an iterative solution to a factorial, both an annotated and a non-annotated. And finally we'll have a big integer iterative solution because we'll see that factorials can overflow the types of the data that we'll be using quite rapidly. In fact, we'll see that we'll be using a long, a long integer type. However, 
when you're dealing with n, even as small as 21, it's not a huge number, you already will overflow the long type and will need to use a big integer solution to handle those cases. Here are the test cases for n that we're going to run with. Let's first go down and look at our recursive solution. So our recursive solution right here, run recursive factorial a, the run keyword, this is the manager code that is actually going to run the real recursive annotated function which is right here. The manager code is simply going to display that we are beginning this recursive factorial annotated phase of the program. It has a long called factorial and it calls recursive factorial A, this function right below it, to get the answer and then it will output the answer annotating the output. So here is our recursive function. The input is an integer n and we print out some annotations but the code here first we check for the base case. If n is less than or equal to 1, in our case that means it would be 0 or 1, we're only going to be passing in valid input. If it's one of those base cases then we're going to return 1 because both of them 0 factorial and 1 factorial are defined to be 1. So we're, we're done. We return from that base case and this call stack will start unwinding back through the general cases. Here's the general case right here. We have factorial long and it's equal to n times and then the name of the function itself, recursive factorial a, self calling but with a reduced problem set. Now instead of n, what was passed in here, it's n minus 1 and each function as it's called will annotate itself and when we get the answer back from all these recursive calls when they finally unwind and come back here we'll return the answer to our caller up here and it will be printed out. Let's continue looking at the program and then we'll do the test executions of it. The next functions down are the non-annotated versions. So here is just the same function that we looked at without any of that code getting in the way. It, it, you can see it looks simpler without all those displays. Same thing, check on the base cases first, handle them, and if it's not a base case, call yourself with the general case. Our iterative solutions, we have an annotated versions and a non-annotated for the iterative solution. Let's go right to the non-annotated solution. Here it is, right here. Again, we get n in. We start out with a long called factorial, set it equal to 1. Then we have a for loop. We're going to iterate here for int i starting at n, we're going to be reducing i by 1 each time in this loop and as long as i is greater than 1 we're going to compute factorial, the current value, times i and assign it to factorial. So if we come in with a 5 we have i would be 5 and then factorial would equal 1 times 5 which is 5 and then I would be 4 and then we'd have 5 times 4 which would be whatever that is and we'll see how the annotated version will show how this works so we're iteratively computing the factorial with no recursion at all, no self calls and when we're done we return a result As we mentioned, for end, when it gets to be 20, you're still okay with longs, but anything bigger than that, 
and it overflows the long type. We'll see that. And for very large answers that we're dealing with, we have to introduce a big integer iterative solution. We have annotated versions of that. If we go right down to the non-annotated version down here, it's very similar to our iterative solution with, with longs. The only difference being that now we have a big integer type for factorial. And we initialize it to the big integer constant 1. We have our loop. And in here, we use the multiply function of factorial. And for use getting i in our loop as a big integer, we take big integer value of i. And that's how we do the equivalent of the iterative code with big integers. Now we're going to go back up to the top of this program and look at each of the test cases and run them. Our first test case here is with a value of 5 for n. We'll run the program with 5 and we'll adjust the display here so we can see this clearly. Here's the output to the system console when we're running with 5. First our recursive, the annotation, so we're calling the factorial function with 5 and it's calling itself with 4, it's calling itself with 3, with 2, with 1. These are the general case calls, self calls that are increasing the size of the call stack. And finally it reaches a base case with 1 being the base case. And at that point it knows to return a 1 and now the call stack will unwind frame by frame. So we return the 1, then we're doing 2 times the factorial of 1, and we're going to return a 2. 3 times the factorial of 2, that's 3 times a 2 is a 6, and we see then the 4 times a 6 is a 24, 5 times a 24 is a 120, and we get all the way back, <clears throat> and we get the 120. So here you can see how this program uses method call to build up the stack self-calling till it reaches a base case and then unwinding back to a solution. Here's the non-annotated result. The iterative result 5, 5 times 4, 5 times 4 times 3, 5, 4, 3, 2. You can see this is fundamentally easier to understand. It's not as abstract of a concept as the recursive solution. And down here the big integer iterative, no difference there at this point. Let's go to our, our next test case and then we'll look at that output. Our next test case is 10. We see again 10, 9, 8. This is the recursive solution. Again, the base case of 1, and then returning back, unwinding the stack to compute 10 factorial. The iterative solution, very clearly a factorial annotation here. It's obvious what's going on. And the big integer, no difference there. We'll go to our next test case now. On this test case, we test 0 as a value. 0 is one of our base cases. It's a boundary test condition. The program might not work for something as simple as that. So we see here, right away, we hit the base case 0. And every one of these, including the iterative, return 1 for 0 factorial go to our next test case. This time we're inputting 1, our other base case, another boundary test condition. And again, we see that it returns 1 as it should. Moving to the next test case. This case we input 21 to find the factorial of 21. And what happens 
is the long data type overflows down here. You can see and when that happens and the computer interprets what's in the memory location for that long which is no longer correct because it overflowed it actually interprets it as a negative number which is obviously wrong. So things fall apart at that point. Of course for instructional purposes we've already accomplished the, what we want to show here of how recursion works but we do have these other topics in here to look at so if we move down the iterative factorial also has the same problem but the big integer iterative you can see does not run into any trouble it can handle these very large numbers because big integer effectively uses a character string of um, algorithmic computations that are not dependent upon a size. So we get 21 factorial and answer down here a large number. We're going to run one more test case on 30 factorial. We'll do that next. Here's 30 factorial. Again, recursion runs into difficulties. At one point, the overflowed number does look like a positive, but it's corrupted, and that's even worse because you might think it's a valid answer when really it's not. It's better when you get an answer that you know is there's an issue. Moving down to the factorial has the same problem with uh, longs, the iterative solution, and the big integer, as you can see here, goes off to the right over there, you can't see it all, but 30 factorial is a really big number. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go back to our source code now. Summing up the main points, we've learned about n factorial and how it can be broken down into a general case and base cases that allow a recursive solution. It also has a simple iterative solution. And we've seen that the order of magnitude here, there are issues that for uh, a real class that was going to produce a result would need to use some kind of technology like a, a big integer that can handle larger data types. So recursion here is you can see it as exactly how it's programmed and it gives you a good idea about how to use it.